Hearing, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome to historic Portland, Oregon, and the commissioning of the United States ship Portland. I am Captain Tony Rodriguez, the ship's executive officer. It is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. Before our ceremony begins, please silence your cell phones and other noise producing devices. And like I've mentioned before, speaking of noise, we've got three howitzers at the end of the pier that will be loud today, so please take your precautions. We're here to celebrate the commissioning of USS Portland. The ship before you was christened in Pascagoula, Mississippi on the 21st day of May 2016. Today she's complete and this crew is proud to serve on the newest amphibious warship in the United States Navy. Our crew is dedicated to carrying on the proud traditions set by the two previous Navy ships to bear the name Portland and to honor the great cities whose name they bear. The first USS Portland, CA-33, the lead ship of her class for cruisers, affectionately known as Sweet Pea, was launched in 1932. In World War II, she saw extensive service beginning at the 1942 Battle of Coral Sea, where she escorted the aircraft carrier Yorktown and picked up survivors from the sunken carrier Lexington. She screened for Yorktown again in the Battle of Midway, picking up her survivors as well. She then supported the carrier enterprise during the initial phases of the Guadalcanal campaign later that year. She was then torpedoed during the naval battle of Guadalcanal. The torpedo inflicted heavy damage, which put her out of action for six months as she was repaired in Sydney, Australia, and later San Diego, California. Upon her return in mid-1943, she saw action in many of the major campaigns of the Pacific War conducting shore bombardment in support of the campaigns at the Aleutian Islands, Gilbert Islands, Marshall Islands, Mariana Islands, and New Guinea. She was involved in the October 1944 Battle of Leyte Gulf, engaging Japanese ships in the decisive battle of Surigao Strait. She then conducted shore bombardments in Lingayen Gulf and Corrigor Island, and in 1945 supported landings during the Battle of Okinawa until the end of the war. Following World War II, Portland accepted a Japanese surrender in the Caroline Islands and then undertook several Operation Magic Carpet Cruises to bring U.S. troops home. She was decommissioned in 1946. In her extensive service, she recruited 16 battle stars, making her one of the most decorated ships in the U.S. fleet. The second USS Portland, LSD-37, was commissioned in 1970 and decommissioned in 2004. She saw service in the Atlantic and Mediterranean, where she served as flagship for Commander, Atlantic Fleet Commander, Naval Surface Forces Atlantic, and Deputy Commander, Atlantic Fleet. She participated in many notable campaigns to include peacekeeping missions in Beirut, Lebanon. The second Sweet Pea earned numerous commendations to include combat action ribbon and liberation medals from kingdoms of Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. In the same spirit of selfless sacrifice and devotion of the two previous ships to bear the name Portland, this ship will sail the oceans and will stand vigilant against those who would threaten democracy and freedom. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from Silent Hull to fully alive warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you, ready to bring our ship alive. In just a few moments, the commander, Navy Region Northwest Band, and the saluting battery will render honors to the Honorable Kate Brown. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, presentation of colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guest, Lieutenant Twig Sergeant, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, Command Chaplain, USS Portland. 
Mr. Gary Piercy, Chairman, USS Portland Commissioning Committee. Commander John Letourneau, United States Navy, Executive Officer, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Gulf Coast. Captain Brian Metcalf, United States Navy, LPD-17, Class Program Manager. Captain Rome Ruiz, United States Navy, Commander, Amphibious Squadron 3. Rear Admiral Michael Mann, United States Navy, retired. Sea Power Business Development Executive, Raytheon Integrated Defense Systems. Rear Admiral Lawrence Creevy, United States Navy, retired. Mr. Brian Kushis, President, Ingalls Shipbuilding and Executive Vice President, Huntington Ingalls Industries. Rear Admiral William Galinas, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. Major General David Kaufman, United States Marine Corps, Director, Expeditionary Warfare, Office of the Chief of Naval Operations. Vice Admiral Richard Brown, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Surface Forces, Commander of Naval Surface Forces, U.S. Pacific Fleet. Vice Admiral Dixon Smith, United States Navy, Deputy Chief of Naval Operations, Fleet Readiness and Logistics. The Honorable James Gertz, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development and Acquisition. The Honorable Ted Wheeler, Mayor, City of Portland, Oregon. The Honorable Patrick Shanahan, Deputy Secretary of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Bonnie Amos, our ship sponsor, is escorted today by Command Master Chief Gregory Radel. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kate Brown, Governor, State of Oregon, escorted today by Captain Jeremy Hill, United States Navy, Portland's prospective commanding officer. Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Kate Brown. Platform, hand salute. Platform, ready, two. Advance, colors.
Reek, tire. Colors. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Sergeant will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. The Lord God, the psalmist prayed many years ago, saying, Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. We are called here today to behold the commissioning of the USS Portland. We crew and embarked sailors and Marines are those some who are called to do our nation's business on the great waters, defending our nation's hard-fought freedoms. May our work to this end reflect your truth, justice, and mercy around the world. Heavenly Father, may USS Portland well represent her namesake's storied heritage of victory and liberty ships built on, on this waterfront. May USS Portland well represent the collective efforts of thousands of your people who, pursuing their vocation as stewards of your gifts, gave their hands to design and build her, and to generations of sailors and Marines who will serve with bravery and determination aboard and embarked upon her as first responders on behalf of our nation. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Sergeant. We would like to thank the Navy Region Northwest Band and Oregon Army National Guard Saluting Battery for their support this morning. Will the guests please be seated. Ship's Company, Paul Raid, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Ted Wheeler. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. For those of you who are out of town guests, it's yet another sunny, beautiful day in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> it's a great honor to be here with all of you on this momentous and historic day, the day the U.S. Navy is naming a new ship after Portland, Oregon. This will be the first ship named exclusively for Oregon's largest city. And I can tell you, our city could not be more proud and honored to have the Navy and this nation recognize our city with such a ship. It's fitting for Portland, a city that was founded as a river port connected to the sea over 150 years ago and a city which is still a major maritime port. Portland area shipyards and industry made significant contributions to both the First World War and the Second World War with Navy ship construction which changed the dynamics of our community and increased population in the entire region. We're proud to have Portland's name on this very versatile ship, which will be used in humanitarian roles to protect our nation's interests, yes, but also to provide critical aid during emergencies, such as earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes, or other disasters, as well as providing ongoing assistance for medical and civic programs. Thank you to the Navy League of the United States for inviting me today to celebrate the commissioning of the USS Portland. It's an honor to be part of such a magnificent event, and I'm happy today to be joined by my wife, Katrina, and my daughter, Quinlan. Thank you for sharing this great moment with me. And thank you to the host of this event, the executive officer of the USS Portland, Captain Tony Rodriguez. Thank you to Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici 
for your leadership and support ensuring that the USS Portland's role is cemented in a humanitarian role. And thank you to Governor Kate Brown for your support, making sure that this ship is used primarily for humanitarian purposes. And thank you to Bonnie Amos, the first former First Lady of the United States Marine Corps and the ship's sponsor for the USS Portland. I'm proud to have such a committed, such a dedicated, active, and involved sponsor watching over and visiting the ship over the years. Bonnie, your support has been invaluable. Thank you. And thank you to Gary Piercy, the chair of the USS Portland Commissioning Committee, for your time, dedication, organizational leadership, and of course, for the preparation of today's ceremony. There are many, many elected leaders and community leaders who have joined us all today. Thank you all for your attendance. Finally, I want to recognize the ship's commanding officer, Jeremy Hill. The commitment to command a ship takes considerable skill and a special kind of natural strength. And you, sir, are a fine example of a person conducting the ship's mission and successfully supporting and upholding our nation's goals. The USS Portland is the 11th San Antonio class amphibious ship of the United States Navy, and it's an honor for such a ship to be named after Portland. As the mayor of this incredible city, I'm very eager to establish a continued and meaningful relationship with the commissioning committee and the United States Navy crew. Every ship has a motto. This ship's motto is very special and appropriate to this great community. The motto is, first responders, brave and determined. The new USS Portland is a force for peace, responding with bravery, responding with determination, and most importantly, responding with aid, carrying our city's name throughout the world. Captain Hill, today I have the honor of presenting you with a city flag of Portland, Oregon. Would you please step forward, sir? Three different colors run through our city's flag, each representing an important feature of our community. The color green represents our forest and our green city. The color yellow represents our agriculture and our commerce. And of course, the color blue represents our rivers. Today, we are on the banks of one of our great rivers, the Willamette River, which has served as a major maritime port, and it also happens to be one of the most beloved features in our community. Please accept this flag as a gesture of our goodwill and prosperity from the city of Portland. We wish you, sir, and your entire crew the best of luck. Go with our spirit, and we'll be with you for many, many years to come. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Mayor Wheeler. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Kushis. Mrs. Amos, good to see you. Distinguished guests, my fellow shipbuilders, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. You know, it's certainly an honor and a privilege to be here today, representing the thousands of hardworking men and women at Ingle Shipbuilding who built the USS Portland and 10 of her sister ships that precede her in the fleet serving all around the globe. For generations, our shipbuilders have put their hearts and souls into every ship they built, and LPD 27 is no exception. At 684 feet long, she has over 500 miles of cable that would reach from Portland to Reno, Nevada. She has enough power capacity to light 6,000 homes and has over 100 miles of piping She's a magnificent ship in many ways, and this is our best LPD to date. 
Our mission at Ingalls is clear. Build the best ships, period. Our national heroes, the men and women who will sell this great ship into harm's way, deserve nothing less than America's best. Ships like Portland provide the tools for our sailors and Marines in both military and humanitarian operations, protecting the homeland and service around the globe. Thousands of dedicated shipbuilders, riggers and fitters, welders, machinists, designers, planners, and many others poured tens of thousands of hours transforming raw material and equipment into the ship our Navy commissions today. Our shipbuilders are indeed a national asset who support the defense of our nation and freedom across the globe. Several of these outstanding shipbuilders are with us today. I would ask that all the English shipbuilders with us, would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Hill, you and your team may know us as the builders of your ship, but you should know that we're among your biggest supporters and we deeply appreciate your service and your sacrifice to our country. On behalf of nearly 12,000 employees at Ingalls Shipyard in the state of Mississippi, best wishes and congratulations to Captain Hill, his officer and his crew members. I'm grateful for this opportunity to be with you today for this historic event. May God bless America, this ship, and all who serve in her. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kushis. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General David Kaufman. Well, good morning and thank you. It's my great honor to be here with the 35th Commandant of the Marine Corps, Commandant Amos, and much more importantly, his lady, our ship sponsor, <laughs> to represent the 37th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Neller, and to speak more broadly on behalf of the Navy Marine Special Operations Forces team that serves as America's inside fighters operating off ships like USS Portland. And since Commandant Amos is no longer in uniform, it looks like I'm officially the most handsome one here. <laughs> it's the uniform. Our Naval Expeditionary and Amphibious Forces are a unique and vital part of our nation's defense. And amphibious warships like USS Portland are the centerpiece of that effort providing the airport, seaport, hospital, amphibious lift for embarked forces, command and control capability, and a robust suite of combat systems that make this ship lethal, survivable, networked, and unpredictable to those who might challenge us. Listen, no one else on the planet can do what we do. Did you hear me? No one else on the planet can do what we can do in what we call the literal battle space. The literal battle space where the water meets the land and where all the domains come together. And that's where USS Portland goes to work. And so this great warship is a wise investment for our Navy and our nation, and in many aspects, a national treasure. She's a critical part of our growth to, our, to a fleet of 355 ships, which is national policy, 38 of which are to be L-class amphibious warships. And I assure you, she is the right ship at the right time, part of what our Chief of Naval Operations calls the Navy the nation needs. In my couple minutes here, I want to explain to you very quickly what this ship will mean to the sailors, Marines, and others who will use it, how she will bless us, and for all the folks of Portland, make you eye-watering proud over the next 40 years or so that she'll carry the name of your city around the world. Today, USS Portland joins her sister ships in the San Antonio class of LPDs, the 11th and an intended 13 ship class. These LPDs, and I've been on all of them and employed them all over the world, are the motherships of influence ops. They are our middleweight fighters right size and right capability for anything that needs doing. So stay tuned, Portland, and look for news something like this in the years ahead. Marine attack helicopters operating off USS Portland conduct airstrikes against terrorist camps. Marine response forces operating MV-22s off USS Portland rescue downed Air Force pilots 
in daring trap mission 1,000 miles into enemy territory. A maritime raid force operating under the tactical command of the Portland captain using small boats off the Portland boat deck interdicts illicit cargo and opposed boarding. In addition to cargo, force captures key operative who's held aboard Portland for interrogation, busting up intended terrorist attacks in your city. U.S. merchant captain and crew rescued from pirates. First stop on U.S. soil, USS Portland, where the captain is pleased to take a personal call from the president, welcoming him back to the United States. USS Portland, first U.S. ship to make a port call into Country X. Big top reception hosted by ambassador aboard called Epic by the local diplomatic corps. USS Portland logs 90 days off coast of Country Y, providing quick reaction forces on alert in support of U.S. representative to peacekeeping efforts. USS Portland, with destroyer escort, conducts freedom of navigation transit to assert U.S. right of passage in international waters, successfully defends small boat swarming attack and enemy missile launches. Portland sets record with 125 days on station as battle area manager for sea space and air defense coordinator for the coalition task force. 260 American citizens are evacuated from chaos in Country Z to USS Portland. One delivers a healthy baby boy in Portland's hospital, OPSO, make the count 261. Portland Roll 2 Hospital sets record. 10 acvendectomies for young Marines in a six month deployment. They love to give up their appendix while they're deployed. <laughs> Portland, Portland may or may not have been involved in last week's Special Forces raid into Country A. Portland culinary specialists are awarded Best Cookies in the Fleet Award. <laughs> Navy and Marine pilots disciplined for making excuses as to why they had to do a quick landing on Portland and drop something off and ask for a bag lunch. And then, on the opening night of the next war, with ACDC playing over the loudspeakers, but no external emissions coming from the ship, 1st Marine Expeditionary Brigade executes an independent mechanized raid targeting sharpened by Portland-based unmanned air systems. The Raid Force Company and the Amtraks, followed by M1 tanks, 70 tons apiece, delivered by LCACs out of the well deck. With Marine attack helicopter support from the roof, all commanded and controlled from Portland's network command and control centers. Regrettably, six Marines are seriously injured during the raid. Kazavak back to Portland by V-22 and will live to tell the tale of dirty deeds done dirt cheap. And we're just getting started because I've basically done all of those things over the last 30 years aboard ships like this one. Beyond that, future chapters will include a full suite of unmanned air, surface, and undersea vehicles operating off Portland. Weapon systems that, we're, that we are only thinking about today providing distributed lethality for future fights high and low-end capability for our nation in order to compete, deter, and win. And like the Marines who sailed up from San Diego with Captain Hill, Marines like me, just younger, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of Marines will come across the brow, embark on this ship, and sail into harm's way. They'll buy the hat. They'll get the t-shirt, they get a chance, they'll bring their family and friends on the captain's family and friends cruise. And while deployed, they'll send some really slow, spend some really slow days. And if they're as lucky as I've been, some crazy scary nights doing the amazing things that we can do off this platform. And for all the deployment, and in truth, for the rest of their lives, they will say with pride, that's my ship, the finest in the fleet, USS Portland. Congratulations to all who played a part in getting Portland to this day. Now it's time to go to work. We put her to work as she takes the American flag, the will of the American people, and most importantly, the best of our country's young people, our sailors and Marines, into harm's way in defense of our nation. Thank you, Semper Fidelis. Thank you, General Kaufman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Richard Brown. Well, good morning. 
Family, friends, distinguished guests, but most importantly, the men and women of USS Portland, it is a distinct honor and privilege to represent the U.S. Navy Surface Force today. I am thrilled to welcome USS Portland LPD-27 and her crew, led by Captain Jeremy Hill, into the Surface Force, and soon back to San Diego, her home port. Just over a decade ago, we introduced this class of ship to the fleet to provide the Navy and Marine Corps with modern sea-based platforms that are networked, survivable, and built to operate 21st century capabilities, such as the MV-22 Osprey, the upgraded amphibious assault vehicle, and command and control technologies by which sailors and Marines take the fight ashore. These ships are designed to gain, sustain, and exploit all facets of the amphibious warfare domain. I am proud to stand here today in front of Portland, who is the embodiment of that vision. This ship will deploy in support of our numbered fleet commanders, meeting our Navy's maritime objectors. She is tailor-made for the dynamic environment of the South Pacific and will provide flexible options and unparalleled tactical advantages. Portland's capabilities greatly strengthen our amphibious fleet. Her advanced self-defense systems, aircraft and landing craft, carrying capabilities, weapon systems and sensors allow her to execute amphibious assault, special operations or expeditionary warfare missions and serve as the secondary aviation platform for the amphibious ready group. Portland will strengthen international relationships with partner nations through numerous multilateral and bilateral exercises. Her persistent visible presence when deployed will reassure allies and partners that the United States is committed to preventing conflict. But if necessary, we will fight and we will win. So on behalf of the United States Naval Surface Force, I welcome USS Portland to the fleet and look forward to seeing her crew accomplish great things in the future. Jeremy, my first bit of advice to you as your type commander, keep the bottom wet and don't scratch the paint. Thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Dixon Smith. Well, good morning. Sir. Outstanding. Mrs. Amos, Bonnie, it's wonderful to see you again. Distinguished guests, City of Portland, but most importantly, the crew of the prospective USS Portland and her embarked Marines. Good morning again. I'm honored to be here on behalf of Admiral John Richardson, the Chief of Naval Operations, and it's awesome for me personally to be back here in Portland again, a town with a long and friendly history and heritage with the United States Navy. There is so much that makes Portland a great city, yes, even more than voodoo donuts, <laughs> bicyclists, and craft beer. For example, at the height of World War II, the Oregon Shipbuilding Company, just a few miles north of here, incredibly launched 24 ships in only 30 days. And that was only one of a half dozen local yards. Ships built in Portland transported countless troops across the Pacific in support of the war effort. Through the, though the banks of these rivers are no longer laden with shipyards, the legacy and spirit of those hardworking men and women live on in many of you here today. We're not launching ships at the rates found in World War II anymore, which means we treasure and appreciate having them all the more. But what we value and prize even more than our ships is our people. And the talented men and women joining the Navy from this area are truly without equal. With the help of your sons, daughters, spouses, and neighbors, Navy Talent Acquisition Group Portland, our local recruiting office, has added over 690 new sailors and officers to the Navy this year, including many of our hardest to fill programs, such as nuclear power, SEALs, and special warfare. As such, I offer that the USS Portland has joined the ever-growing list of reasons for Portlanders to be proud. The men and women of this crew come from all across this nation and will soon sail, perhaps into harm's way, to keep us safe here at home. We spent a lot of time talking about building and developing the Navy the nation needs. This ship and this crew are what we are talking about, and they are why we do it. Our national defense strategy that Secretary of Defense Mattis signed out earlier this year outlines 11 defense objectives for the department, and USS Portland, with her crew and embarked Marines, 
is able to help us achieve every single one of them. Among her many missions and objectives, she will defend our homeland from attack, she will ensure common domains remain open and free, and the collective creativity and talent of this crew, she will certainly help establish an unmatched 21st century national security innovation base. I mentioned it at the USS Portland's christening, and I'll say it again. Although you would find that I grew up in Connecticut, I've had the privilege of calling Portland home since 1979. This is a proud city with a proud legacy, and this ship, the first to be named Portland exclusively for the city of Portland, Oregon, will carry the City of Roses legacy across the globe. Your support and that of this great city will lend strength and fortitude to the men and women who walk the decks of this warship. I'll leave you with an excerpt of a 1945 Oregon shipbuilding publication that could just as easily serve as a mantra for this ship. And I quote, this much is certain. Every one of us is stronger for having done his job well. We have acquired new skills, new confidence in our ability, new willingness to venture. We know we can meet emergencies, that we can stand pressure, and that we can carry on against any obstacle. Crew of the Portland, and on behalf of the CNO, I challenge each of you to follow on the hardworking legacy of the city of Portland. Never give up, never give in, and you will certainly make your nation and the citizens of your namesake proud. Thank you very much, and God bless Portland, her commanding officers, crews, the Navy and Marine Corps team, and the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kate Brown. Good morning, fellow Oregonians. Distinguished guests, flag and general officers, I am so honored to be here today for the commissioning of the USS Portland. To Vice Admiral Brown, Major General Kaufman, Secretary Gertz, and Secretary Shanahan, and of course, Mrs. Amos, welcome to our beautiful state and the city of Portland. Mayor Wheeler, thanks for arranging such fabulous weather this morning. We are so thrilled this impressive Navy ship will proudly bear the name of our beloved Rose City. To Captain Hill and the new crew of the USS Portland, as well as the brave men and women serving in the armed forces, thank you for protecting peace and defending America from sea to shining sea. I'd like to also acknowledge the members of Oregon's congressional delegation and members of the commissioning board who helped to make today's historic commissioning possible. Thank you so much for your efforts. As the daughter of a service member, I have incredible respect and admiration for those who serve. As Oregonians, we are also very grateful for our military families for the sacrifices you endure. Thank you so much for your service. We know that freedom is not free. Now, more than ever, the U.S. Navy and armed forces are deployed around the world, defending democracy in an age of unprecedented threats and uncertainty. Time and time again, it is you, our men and women in uniform, who answer the call of duty, our dedicated warriors willing to put themselves in harm's way to protect our liberties and our way of life. Around the world and around the clock, we are protected by the world's most powerful modern navy, a global force for good. On behalf of the state of Oregon, we thank you. Portland, as you all know, has a proud tradition of supporting the U.S. Navy. During World War II, Portland was home to the Kaiser Shipyards. Between 1942 and 1945, the Kaiser Shipyards produced T2 tankers. At pre peak production, some 97,000 Oregonians were employed in the shipyards many of whom moved to no Northwest 
at the chance of new opportunities. During this period, Oregon had the distinction of producing more Liberty and Victory ships than any other shipyard in the entire nation. Changing times and a devastating flood would eventually end the production of Navy vessels. But Port Luther's continue the tradition of celebrating our Navy pride during the annual Rose Festival. Now in its 110th year, the Portland Rose Festival is one of the few U.S. ports of call for courtesy visits from the U.S. Navy, U.S. Coast Guard, and our friends to the north, the Royal Canadian Navy. We look for forward to Fleet Week each year. It's always a special honor to welcome the men and the women of the U.S. Navy to our city. Yes. Although the USS Portland will be docked in its home port in San Diego, please know that she and her crew are always welcome here in the City of Roses. Today, thank you for docking her in Portland to commission her and to bring her to life. We wish her and all who sail upon her Godspeed, fair winds, and following seas. We know that the USS Portland and you, her crew, will represent Oregon and the United States with honor and distinction. Godspeed and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable James Gertz. Distinguished platform guests, our wonderful ship sponsor, Bonnie and General Amos, elected officials, the crew and family of the USS Portland, fellow veterans, shipbuilders, the Portland community, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's my distinct honor to represent the Secretary of Navy, Richard Spencer, at this ceremony today. Commissioning ceremonies are a time-honored tradition in our Navy, and participating in these ceremonies is one of the most rewarding parts of my job because it reflects two great traits of our nation teamwork and commitment. The teamwork and commitment of our wonderful commissioning team, led by Gary, who's been working for years to orchestrate today's events. The teamwork and commitment of the thousands of suppliers, most of them small businesses from around the country, who built all the parts that we've assembled in this awesome warship. The teamwork and commitment of the thousands of shipbuilders at Huntington Ingalls, who have put millions of man hours to create our most uh, effective and our highest quality warship to date, which these sailors and Marines will take to war for us. The teamwork and commitment of the Navy acquisition and engineering teams who work hand in hand with the shipbuilders and the crew to ensure we had a safe and lethal platform. The teamwork and commitment of the crew who's been training for months and years to be ready, ready for the days to come, ready when the nation will call on this ship and this crew to do our bidding around the world. The teamwork and commitment of our secret weapon, not the 800 Marines we'll have on board, but Bonnie Amos here. She is our secret weapon. She is the spirit of the ship. She will be the one that sails with the ship and her crew wherever they are around the globe. We say the ship takes on the spirit of her sponsor, and I can't think of a better sponsor for this ship to represent her, this fine city, and our nation. The teamwork and commitment of our military families, many of them who will be sitting here as a crew is sailing around the world. We are only as strong as our families that support our great military. The teamwork and commitment of the many military members as we speak today who are deployed around the world, keeping us safe, allowing us to have this great ceremony. And finally, the teamwork and commitment of the city, citizens of Portland, our Congress, our nation, all of whom support our military and our families as we build and support the Navy the nation needs. The USS Portland will join the Navy carrying on the proud tradition of her namesake, Portland. It pays tribute to not only the largest city in Oregon, but to the legacy of those who have gone before us, especially the generations of those here in Portland who built such great ships uh, and who served our nation. 
And it's wonderful to see so many veterans out here, veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and every war since. Thank you for being out here with us. She's our most advanced. The USS Portland is our most advanced amphibious warship. She's filled with the innovations needed to compete and win. The Portland, guided by Captain Hill and her crew, and those that follow them, will shape their own future. I'm confident this, that this warship, its well-trained crew, and the support of the city of Portland will all work together so that they are ready to take on the many challenges she'll face now in the years to come. God bless this ship, God bless this crew and the families, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. It's now, my, it's now my distinct pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for today, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Pat Shanahan. Thank, Thank you, sir. Yeah. Morning, Portland. Morning. Morning. Yeah. We're in the home stretch here. You have this face that looks like he better be fast or funny. <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, Mrs. Amos, Governor Brown, Congress, Woman Bonamici, Mayor Wheeler, Secretary Gertz, Admiral Smith, Admiral Brown, General Kaufman, all military officers and personnel, Captain Hill, and the proud crew and families, all volunteers who made this ceremony possible, and the great people of Portland. On behalf of Secretary Mattis, it is my honor to join you this morning as we break the pennant and set the first watch, as we welcome United States ship Portland to the fleet. To the people of Portland in particular, thank you for allowing a Washingtonian to join you for this momentous occasion. Your city now has a ship worthy of its industrious heritage and creative spirit. The acceptance trials are over. Her officers and crew are ready. Wherever her flag flies, in foreign ports, on high seas, in turbulent waters, or calm waters, she will carry the spirit of this city on the Columbia River. She'll also carry a few other things. USS Portland is 25,000 tons of diplomacy. She has a surge capacity of 800 Marines. If my math is right, that's about 31 tons per Marine. Not a bad ratio. By her officers, crew, and embarked Marines, USSS Portland will also carry American power and American heart anywhere they are needed. Whether through her air cushion and conventional landing craft, her vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, or her range of other state-of-the-art systems, Portland's Sailors and Marines will do everything from amphibious assault and special operations to humanitarian assistance and foreign disaster relief. A moment ago we heard her motto, first responders, brave and determined. We have no doubt they will leave that, live that motto daily. As we gather today, it is important to recognize how this ship is emblematic of your Department of Defense. See her silhouette? We're streamlined. See her sailors and Marines here today? We're dedicated. Lastly, see her presence. We're on the West Coast. We are in the Pacific. America is a Pacific power. Portland is a Pacific city and USS Portland will be home ported on the Pacific. We are not subtle about our priorities in the Department of Defense. I want to take a moment now to thank the many people who made this ship and her mission possible. First, to the members of Congress, thank you for your leadership. You gave the direction to the department, you provided the resources. And this year, you have given the budgetary certainty we need to keep our country safe. And this department recognizes, in the words of Secretary Mattis, our solemn obligation to gain full value from every tax dollar spent on defense. 
We will not let you down. Next, to, to those whose industry, craftsmanship, and labor built this ship, the men and women whose uniforms are lab coats and hard hats, you harness the power of American enterprise to defend our way of life. Thank you so much. There you go. Oh, good. Here it's important to note, as we heard, the first USS Portland was launched in 1932, nearly a decade before America entered World War II. At that time, few could have imagined the role she would play in the Coral Sea, Midway, or Guadalcanal. But she was ready when crisis came. So it is today with this ship and this crew, they are ready should they be called upon. Lastly, to the plank owners, those who in just a few moments will bring the ship to life, we know how remarkable you are. When the department underinvested, you overdelivered. In the longest continuous period of fighting in American history, you carried the burden stoically and faithfully with an attitude that can be summed up simply steady as she goes. Know that your department is reclaiming its era of strategic purpose. As Secretary Mattis says, we are aligned in a whole of government approach to defending this nation. We are committing to getting you the tools you need to do the job you volunteered to do. As you go about that job in the days to come, remember always your presence aboard sends a simple message to allies, have no fear. To adversaries, don't even think about it. Every day you will have, a you will have the special support of the people of Portland. And while sailing with a compliment of Portland's specialty beverages is a beer too far, <laughs> there is still time to get outfitted with voodoo donuts. So thank you again for the honor of joining you today. Thank you to all who made this special day possible. And on behalf of Secretary Mattis and everyone in the Department of Defense, fair winds and following seas, thank you and God bless. Thank you, Secretary Shanahan. I would be honored if you would now place Portland in commission. For the President of the United States, I hereby place United States Ship Portland in commission. Yeah. May God bless and guide this wardship and all who shall sail in her. Thank you, Secretary Shanahan. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's company, hot ten, hook. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast, forecastle, and fantail as we hoist the colors and commissioning pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commissioning pennant. Captain, the colors and commissioning pennant are flying over USS Portland. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander Naval Military Personnel Command to Captain Jeremy Hill, United States Navy. Subject, Bupers Order Number 0677 of August 2015. When directed by reporting senior, detach from present duty and report to pre-commissioning unit Portland as commanding officer. 
Upon commissioning of USS Portland, report for duty as commanding officer. Vice Admiral Smith, United States ship Portland is in commission and I am in command. Executive Officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and, while on watch, is responsible for the safe, and op safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is a traditional symbol of the officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are pleased to have Rear Admiral Lawrence Creevy, United States Navy, retired, in attendance. Rear Admiral Creevy was the last commanding officer of LSD-37. He will pass the long glass to his fellow LSD-37 shipmate and our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant David Roach from Danielson, Connecticut. The petty officer of the watch is Navy Counselor First Class Michael Bell from Columbia, South Carolina. The messenger of the watch is hospital corpsman third class Taylor Phillips from Modesto, California. And the bosun mate of the watch is bosun mate second class Holly Funkhauser from Muncie, Indiana. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsor, Ms. Bonnie Amos, here with us today. Bonnie christened the ship in Pasagoula, Mississippi in May 2016. Bonnie, I would be honored if you would join me and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. So how do you like us so far? She's a pretty amazing ship and you've heard all about her this morning. Portland, we're very delighted to be here with you this morning. That this ship is named for your city should honor you greatly for the next 40 to 45 years that my ship will sail the seven seas. To our distinguished guests on the platform, thank you. Your presence has honored us this morning. To Gary Piercy and our Navy League, when we didn't think anybody would show up this morning. <laughs> we got a whole boatload of people here. Thank you. I have one mission here this morning as sponsor of this ship. Therefore, my remarks will be brief before I give my command. A sponsor of a ship is the woman who gives her spirit to the ship and will remain a part of this ship Wherever she sails, whatever her mission, whoever is her captain. It is a long tradition dating back to Phoenician days, one that the Navy has sustained through its many years. I am the sponsor of this ship because my husband is General James F. Amos. He is the 35th Commandant of the Marine Corps retired from active duty three and a half years ago after 42 and a half years of service to his country. Because he was commandant, I get to be sponsor of this marvelous ship. Thank you, honey, for allowing me to do this. Jim was born here in the Pacific Northwest and went to college in the Northwest. 
As a result, this morning we have many of his relatives in the audience who hail from Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. So it is fitting that I am standing on this platform this morning. Welcome one and all. I am blessed to have my children and grandchildren with us this morning and many amazing and wonderful friends who have come from far and wide. Allow me to introduce my family to you. My grandchildren promised me extra kisses and hugs if I mentioned their name from this platform. My daughter Jamie Nielsen, her husband Eric, my son Joshua Amos and his wife Molly, and our four grandchildren, Charlie, Jackson, Ella James, and Keating. And I better get lots of hugs and, Keating, and kisses for that shout out. Both Jamie, thank you, both Jamie and Molly, along with my longest and dearest friend, Linda Valerga, my friend for 42 years, are the maidens for this ship. When I am unable to represent this ship, whatever the occasion, Linda, Jamie, and Molly will represent and fill my role as sponsor. Our many friends here hail from North Carolina, from Virginia, from California, and all those other states around here. Thank you all. I could not complete my remarks without saying how grateful I am for Huntington Ingalls shipbuilders, to the dedicated men and women who worked thousands of hours to build the finest ship possible. This is their service to our country, building great ships that carry our sailors and Marines to the far reaches of our globe. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Bruce Knowles. Shipbuilders, you continue to make me proud. Captain Hill and your magnificent crew, today is magic, and you've all worked tirelessly to ensure perfection. When I met Captain Hill two and a half years ago, he was the prospective commanding officer of LPD 27. Then he became the pre-commissioning commanding officer of LPD Portland. Today, Captain Hill has finally become the commanding officer of USS Portland. And we're all pretty damn proud. In August of 2013, I welded my initials in the keel of this ship, certifying that keel to be truly and fairly laid. In May of 2016, I slammed a bottle of champagne across her bow and declared her Portland. Today, she becomes United States ship. USS Portland. If you'll allow me to quote from John Haley's book, A Darker Sea, it seems that when every ship and crew, there must come some moment when all its pieces, it, all its men and women, with all its spars and guns and all its component parts, fuse into a unit. Today is that moment. With your permission, Captain, I'd like to give my command. Officers, crew, and Marines of United States Portland, Man our ship and bring her to life.
Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS Portland salutes you. We are proud to serve in your great Navy and Marine Corps. Ships Company, ready? Two. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS Portland is manned and ready. Very well. Commodore Ruiz, USS Portland is manned and ready and reports for duty. Very well. Secretary Shanahan, request permission to break your flag, sir. Break my flag. <laughs> Executive officer, break the flag of Deputy Secretary of Defense. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Deputy Secretary of Defense. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Deputy Secretary of Defense is flying over USS Portland. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Jeremy Hill, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Portland. <laughs> Ship's Company, Parade, Rest. Governor Brown, Deputy Secretary Shanahan, Mayor Wheeler, Mayors Calloway, Clark. Gibson, Lenahan, Ogden, Sherado, Studebaker, Waslogal, Secretary Gertz, Representative Evans and Bonamici, General Amos, Vice Admiral Smith, Vice Admiral Brown, Major General Kaufman, Rear Admiral Galinas, Rear Admiral Creevy, Rear Admiral Mann, Flag and General Officers in attendance. Commodore Ruiz, local first responder leaders, Captains Cloyd, Griffiths, Timmons, Berliner, Sisson, and Mallory. The one MEF Marines, former Portland sailors and Marines, former military members, our ship sponsor, Ms. Bonnie Amos, and of course, our valued citizens of Portland. I want to extend a warm and gracious thank you to the city of Portland for welcoming to us to your city. The anticipation of our arrival and our outpouring of support this week has simply been amazing. Mayor Wheeler, I want to extend my appreciation to you and your community for welcoming us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I want to take a brief moment to recognize the former sailors of USS Portland LSD 37 as they took on the legacy of the first Portland, affectionately known as Sweepy, as you've heard. They stood proud in historic watch for the new Portland sailors to emulate. Thank you for your service and continuing example of heroism from the first Portland CA 33. This Portland's generation of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines will continue to learn from your example now and in the future. If you would indulge me for a moment, please stand and give the former Portland crews, as well as our proud veterans in the audience, a round of applause. Thank you. Please be seated. The journey to today's commissioning started over four years ago in August 2010 when our uh, sponsor, Ms. Bonnie Amos, authenticated the keel, as she mentioned, in Mississippi, with the christening in May, as, that, as she also mentioned, it followed. We're very fortunate to have Bonnie as our sponsor. She embodies brave and determined over and over again in her pursuit to help military mem service members around the world. To Ms. Bonnie Amos, General Amos, our maidens, Linda, Jamie and Molly, thank you for your support and know that we will always look forward to having you on board to continue the amazing spirit you have already brought to this ship. Bonnie, today the ship will now share with you and your favorite phrase, my ship. <laughs> Our ship will proudly sail across the world bearing the name and spirit of Portland, Oregon. Portland. We will make you proud. 
the San Antonio class dock land platform amphibious ship. In front of you is the most lethal and advanced amphibious ship to ever set sail in the high seas. It has capabilities to bring the forward presence in the fight to the shores of the enemy, as well as being the first responder to crises around the globe. This beautiful ship is fast and powerful and represents the fighting spirit of our namesake, Portland. Yet a ship is nothing without her permanent embarked crew, Navy and Marine Corps alike. And I want to take a moment to brag about the 475 service members that stand in front of you. These young men and women are the finest example that our nation has to offer today. They are sons and daughters, as well as mothers and fathers, that have sacrificed so much time away from their loved ones to bring this ship to life. The crew took ownership of their ship, our ship, in September 2017 and made it their own. I'm immensely proud to sail with all that crew that is on board that ship. And to our families, thank you for your support and your loved ones, for your loved ones, throughout the many months away from home. It's the spouses and children with the resilience and the strength to manage throughout the long periods of separation. It is the hardest job in the Navy. I personally owe a debt of gratitude to my shipmates, friends, and families that have come from all over the country. My father, Ray, thank you for your love and support throughout my life. It means a lot to me to have you here today, Dan. To my friends from Wisconsin, Minnesota, Florida, Washington, D.C., Oregon, and other areas around the U.S., we don't get to see each other enough, but it's always a great time when we do get together. To my wife, Cindy, and my daughter, Skylar, grateful to have you in my life, and thank you for being here. I appreciate everything you do. I love you. When I received the assignment to this prospecting commanding officer of this ship, it was the most significant accomplishment of my career. Like I've said before, I am proud of this ship and her crew, but I'm also proud to be a part of the representation of this great city Portland, Oregon. You are amazing, diverse, enthusiastic, and determined people, and we appreciate all that you do for us. Before I depart the stage, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize our first responders in the audience, for they are true heroes, and we hold a special place in our hearts and minds as we continue to pray for their safety. City of Portland, local first responders, please stand so that we may recognize you. Thank you. I want to thank you all for joining us for our special day. May God bless you, bless the sailors and Marines of the United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps, and may God bless America. Sorry. Ship's Company, Otto and Hut, will the guests please rise for the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal Father, as we go from this place, I ask that you bless the commanding officer, officers, crew, and Marines of USS Portland. They go freshly commissioned to carry out our country's business around the world. I pray especially for Captain J.R. Hill, that you prepare him for the awesome responsibility known as Command at Sea. Father, guide the officers, crew, and Marines. Unify them. Coalesce them as a crew through the many hours, days, and even the very years ahead of them so that they might bring blessing to their families, their spouses, their Navy, their God. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated for the departure of our platform guests. 